Oh yeah, that's a lot of stars. Messier 92, also known as M92 or NGC 6341, is a globular cluster of stars in the northern constellation of Hercules. Hercules. And it's drifting out of view. It was discovered by Johann Ellert Bode, a sweet Bode, in 1777, then published by in the uh, Yabruk, Yabruk <laughs> during 1779. It was inadvertently rediscovered by Charles Messier in 1781. Charles, you stealer, thief. Charles rediscovered it and added it to his book, uh, the Messier Catalog, as the 92nd entry in his catalog. This thing's about 26,700 light years away from our solar system. Thanks, I'll be back. That means that the light, let's get into the telescope. I'm gonna move the telescope really quick. Oh, too far. This is the globular cluster I was, I was trying to find the other night when we were looking at the Hercules globular cluster. But yeah, that means that this light is uh, 26,000 years old. It, uh, what was going on 26,000 years ago? Let's see. Uh, I think that was before the Ice Age. The Ice Age was 10,000 years ago. So yeah, I don't know. That's... But anyways, the, the light that left these stars finally got here just now, today. <laughs> All right. It's a long time. We've had a long journey. It is all relative. And if you've never seen a globular cluster, hey, this is for you. And welcome. All right, now we're gonna jump over to another one. We're gonna jump over to the Hercules globular cluster, M13. This is the one that's nearby, the one that we were looking at uh, a few nights ago. Oh, that's so cool. It's just a huge chunk of stars. Right. Let me know if you see M13 in here. Well, actually, no, we'll, we'll come back. We're moving on to another globular cluster, maybe. Let's get some stars. Ooh, he's struggling. Let's see. Oh, I think it's coming up right about now. Oh, there it is. Wow, that one's big in comparison. Whoa. And this is M13. And right now we're looking through a 10 inch Dobsonian. Carl, the Apertura 8010. Look at all those chickens. Yeah, I feel like you can see way more stars in this one. Mm -hmm. Whoops. Woohoo! Yeah. yeah. It looks like it's still in good focus, too. Alright, now the Whirlpool Galaxy?
we're going to jump over to the Whirlpool Galaxy next. It might look a little funny on here. Alright, you ready? Yes. Oh, space. Well, first, I would like to jump to a star. Let's go to Arcturus. That is a really bright star. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. But uh, I came here just to make sure that we're still in focus. I wanted to see four points coming off that star, and I do. And also, I decreased the saturation by quite a bit. So let's see if we can get some color back into here. Cool. All right, now we're gonna try and jump on over to that galaxy. But first, more stars. More stars. Okay. All right. I'm gonna stop messing around now. Let's get this galaxy. Oh, we're gonna go way up. Okay. So I need to get to. <laughs> Sorry, bump the telescope. All right. I need to get to Al Cade. We got a big bright star in there. Yes. We. Next, I need to go over to these stars. Still here. Oh, there it is. Oh, um, just off to the right. Yeah, off to the side there. Okay, we're getting a galaxy in view. So two galaxies. And I'm gonna make sure it's nice and bright here in just a second. All right, let's increase the exposure by quite a bit, actually. Let's go up to about one second's worth of exposure. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, there's the Whirlpool Galaxy. That's awesome. All right, so we finally got M92 knocked off the list and checked out M13. And here we are at M50, uh, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Let me, uh, let me look really quick <laughs> so you don't get false Sorry it's a little grainy, we just have to have the gain on the camera really high in order to see this thing. We were looking at the pinwheel galaxy earlier, what is it? M51. M51. Or NGC 5194. Thank you very much, Cheyenne. Yeah. You're in the right ballpark. Is it 50, 50, 50 something? 50 something. <laughs> yeah, and I, we built a little light shade for the telescope, and it seems to be working pretty well. Those galaxies are just so pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, which galaxy is this? This is the Whirlpool Galaxy, uh, M51, or NGC 2650... 5194, I think. 5194. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and we got any information on this thing? It's, uh... I forget how far away it is. It lies in the constellation of Canes 
Um, oh, Canis Venetisi? Yeah, that's what it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how, how you say it. I'm not sure. It was the first galaxy to be classified as a spiral galaxy. Oh. Its radius is 30,000 light years, so the diameter is about 60,000 light years across. Oh, it's tiny. Yeah. Wait. No, ours is like 100, 150,000 or 100,000 light years across is how big ours is. So oh. it's, I think it's smaller than our galaxy, I think is what that means. Cool. Um, its distance from Earth is twenty three, about 23 million light years. Oh, no, that's too big. That's a big number. 23 million? That means that the light that came from these stars is 23 million years old. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Okay, go on. Its age is about 400 million years old. What? That's wait, four hundred million. That's uh, half a less than half a billion. Yeah. So this is a really young galaxy because ours is supposed to be billions of years old. That's crazy. Okay. Uh, yeah. If that. If, yes. If that's... Yeah. I think you're correct. <laughs> this is all just off of Wikipedia. So. Oh, I mean, no. Wikipedia is concrete. I go to them. For... <laughs> <laughs> I go to them for diagnostics on my medical it's conditions. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the first thing that comes up on Google, so... No, I've been using Wikipedia this whole time, and, and I totally shunned somebody else that was using Wikipedia, and I feel really bad about it. I'm sorry, Duwaldi Ish Ishmal, I think was his name. I, for you, whoever you... I'm sorry. <laughs> Wikipedia is a great source for space information. Mm -hmm. Not information about, uh, what was it, the honey badger. Don't, yeah... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty much all that it gives, like, just right away. Who discovered it? Uh, it doesn't say. Huh. Let me try and find but it. But it was one of the first ones that was actually classified as a spiral arm galaxy. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. It was discovered on October 13, 1773, by Charles Messier, while hunting for objects that could confuse comet hunters. <laughs> He's like, all right, guys, I don't know what this is. It's not a comet, though, so stop <laughs> sending me your letters to add this into my list. Its companion galaxy was discovered in 1781 by Pierre... Menchian, Menchian, or yes. something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't pronounce his name either, but yeah, I, I read about him. Although it was not known whether it was interacting or merely, merely another galaxy passing at a distance. Because this isn't interacting. Right. They're, they're interacting. And so it was, a set, it was a different astronomer, not Charles. Although I think Pierre and Charles worked together. Um, it was... That's weird. I wonder how different their telescopes were. Oh, we got a little satellite? Yeah, that's a satellite coming through. Oh, Check that cool. out. Zoom! We've been noticing that a lot with this galaxy tonight. Mm -hmm. It just seems to be crossing that path. Alright, is there anything else we can show tonight? Well, oh, you got something else? This is just kind of interesting. In 1845, William Parsons, third Earl of, of Rossi, I don't know how to pronounce Oh, the that. Earl of Ross. Ross, okay. I'm bad he at He used a 72-inch... Mm -hmm. uh, reflecting telescope. Yeah, he, he had a giant... It was called the Leviathan, is what they called that telescope. It could only sway up and down. It couldn't move left and right. It had no it was just... azimuth. It was only <laughs> alt, right? And... Uh, he had to use stairs to get up to the top of it to look through an eyepiece. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's time to feed the cat. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he found... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, that's okay. Um, he found that the Whirlpool galaxy possessed a uh, spiral structure. Oh! The first he... nebula, in quotations, to be known to have one. It was the Earl of Ross who, who discovered that. I can't remember mm -hmm. his first name, but that's really cool. William Parsons. William Parsons. Yeah. Thanks, William, for your huge donation to astronomy. Yeah. Alright. Is there anything else we can check out really quick? Um, day goes up. We could try and check out the, the, uh, ring nebula? the ring nebula. That's a beautiful one. We'll go there really quick.
We're gonna go jumping on over. Let's check out Vega really quick. And this would be a good test of our new light shield. We'll be pointing it right in the direction of a bunch of light. And it should be pretty light polluted out here actually. Let's see how bad it is. Oh Vega, where are you? There we are. It definitely looks a little light polluted, but I feel like it it looked worse without the the shield. That's a lot of stars around it. Yeah, let me increase the contrast a bit. <clears throat> oh, we're getting a lot of blue. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, the star Vega. And it used to be the North Star. It might be again at some point. Oh, I, I touched the telescope. My, my bad. All right, let me try and get that ring nebula really quick. But before I do that, check this out. Let's, I have never actually checked out the double-double with this camera. So that's a binary star system. But it should be like a quadruple binary star system. Sorry if it starts uh, focusing on you like crazy, but no, I don't think we'll be able to resolve it with this camera. We'd need to zoom in like crazy. So let's go back up and let's get that ring nebula. But still, that's cool. We got the. That is cool. They look really cute. They are. Just pals hanging out. All right, oh, there there's is. the ring nebula. Let me get it a little bit more in center. I feel like you can make out some color. Cool, yeah, you definitely can on the uh, on the phone. I'm seeing a red ring around it. Mm -hmm. Here, let me try and increase the contrast a bit some more. Because this is a really bright object. And as far as nebulas go. Yeah. Huh. Well, that's cool. Yeah, that's the ring nebula. Yeah, I've never been able to really see a lot of the color on it like that before. Besides, like, you know, photos. Should I try and lower the ex... Yeah, let's lower the exposure just a wee bit. I think my Surface Pro just died. Oh, F. Well, that's the end of the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little bit of the Ring Nebula. Yeah, now. we'll we'll do the Ring Nebula in full detail and full give it full justice the next time. Till then, thank you so much for joining in. Stay spacey, y'all. Love you. We'll do this again soon. Mm. Batteries, you know, they just. They just die. They just die on you sometimes. They just don't vibe. They, they just die. <laughs> Is it cold out here? I don't know. It's, I'm just... <laughs>